Welcome back to your Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast, you sexy little achiever. This is where we discuss the previous week in gaming, maybe go over a topic too. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting across me as always, virtually of course, Alex. How do you do? I do very well. It's been a good week. Yeah. We got to guys, come here. Huddle up, Uh-oh. as they say in soccer and or football, or both, depending football. on where you're um, We got a good week. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Dude, there's some cool man. stuff happening. There's yeah, games out, which I didn't think we'd see for forever, so that's exciting. Oh, for sure. And you know what? Just let them have it, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I had a good dinner. Yeah. Everything, everything's on the up and up. Yeah, man. What'd you have for dinner? <laughs> I had a balsamic vinegar chicken breast. Ooh. Um, I braised it in balsamic vinegar with some mm-hmm. onions, peppers. Ooh. I had Ooh. a complete opposite. So I had. <laughs> <laughs> and I had some. I had that's not for, I the, had a for piece, the season, a, but a piece hey, of wood. I had some. <laughs> what was it? I had some stuffing. Like just stuffing? Yeah. Like I had nothing else. So I just like. Yeah, I had a box of stuffing, and I was like, I was just <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and I was if just you like, don't go to <laughs> patreon.com slash easyachievers right now, <laughs> Alex will eat stuffing for another way. Uh, you, you just ate stuffing? <laughs> yeah, I was hungry. I didn't want ramen or soup, and I didn't have, I don't, I, I had a sandwich for lunch, so I was like, I don't have anything else to make. Nothing's defrosted. Alex, like, when we made the jokes that you were hungry, mm-hmm. they were jokes. <laughs> I didn't think you'd really run out of food. I didn't run out of food. I have food. I just didn't defrost anything. Uh, what's your stance on the stuffing? I assume you like it. You ate no, it. No, yeah, right? no. I like it. And it's annoying because as soon as I ate it, and I was like, damn, now I need some turkey. I'm not a fan of the stuffing. Wow. I can get a f- I can get a few bites in. I'm not going to act like I dislike I it very highly. Oh, gee, Alex, <laughs> it's not healthy at all. <laughs> I mean, that's all I ate, so I mean. I mean, I don't think that's how it works. It sounds like you're a f- you're a pirate. <laughs> I mean, like, you, like you eat an orange for God's sakes. Arr. Get a a cutie. I like those things. A cutie? You mean like yeah, one of those little know. halos? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are delicious. Yeah, no, I remember. <laughs> I remember you used to keep a halo in your pocket. I did do that. I forgot about. <laughs> <laughs> you came. You came into work. And I was like, "What's in your pocket?" You pull out a damn orange. You're like, "What is that?" I was like, "What is that?" You're like, "It's a halo." It's a halo. Like, and then I oh, open it, okay. start devouring. Sometimes on a, on a great day, I, I need that quick boost of energy, and mm-hmm. also my throat's a little dry. You put the whole thing in your mouth. Mm. Now, of course, I take the skin off. You sure? But... You didn't specify at the beginning. <laughs> That's you true. put the whole thing in your mouth and I've, then you use your tongue to peel it. Every kid at one point bit into an orange without peeling it oh, and then and never did it again. It's hor- awful. Uh, yeah, just god sure. awful. As a kid one time I was like, you know what I got? I'm just going to use my teeth. And then I just, and then, <laughs> and then about vomited. I was like, <laughs> yep. <this is> gross. <laughs> oh god. But we're not a fruit driven podcast. No, no, no. We should be. No, though. we are a. We should be. I think we could do a side business. Yeah, man. Called getting fruit. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't have to be real fruit. It could be virtually on Animal Crossing. Uh, check us. Uh, check us out. We're, we don't just do fruit. We do games as well. Uh, we go live every Friday on every podcast services of your choosing. If we're not on one, well, then, of course, you should reach out and we'll get on it. Uh, YouTube every Friday as well. If you enjoy our content, please go over to patreon.com slash cgachievers. If you don't give us a buck, Alex, of course, will have to eat stuffing. Um, I think that will be our new thing. First, we joked that his animals would die of starvation. Now, it is Alex will eat stuffing and definitely die of some sort of malnutrition because, <laughs> again, there's zero chance that it's healthy. <laughs> I mean, well, I, I'm still alive. I, I, hey, you're right, I guess. Yep. <laughs> if you're a freeloader, don't worry, we are too. Please give us the five stars. Like us everywhere. Give us the watch time. Give us the views. Give us all the five star reviews. Of course, you can head over to Twitter at EVM9000 at Creepy Skater if you want to scream at us. 
Uh, it's like I said, we have a huge news week. Yes. yes we have yes. new release dates for Last of Us Ghost of Shima. We have some PS5 events and Xbox events happening. And we have a big, pretty big game to start off the week talking yes. about. And I'm excited to get to it. But first, I have one question to ask you. What is that? What have you been playing? I What I've been playing? I more likely what I what did I beat? Oh, I ladies and gentlemen, Final Fantasy VII remake. He did it, finally. F's in the chat. I don't know what that means, but I think that <laughs> works here. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> okay, so we of course will do a spoiler cast. Um, possibly after this, might be a few days from now, but off the cuff, quick review, spoiler mm-hmm. free. Mm-hmm. What did you think of the game? I actually really enjoyed it. I did too. Yeah, actually, um, I know, I'm curious because you, you of course, Kingdom Hearts fan like myself. Mm-hmm. At every point, almost in the game, did you think this would be awesome if Kingdom Hearts did it? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. I, I, I have to admit, I, I did. Kingdom Hearts three, of course, I loved. I do not dislike it as much as some people do, but mm-hmm. so there were points I hit. I was like, God, why didn't Kingdom Hearts do this? <laughs> like, just literally asking myself that. Like, yeah, this is a very good uh, example of of um, modernizing a game. I feel, yeah, and keeping the combat style, but giving it a nice twist. Mm. Uh, but uh, where you're sitting at right now, you beat it what a few hours ago? Yes, I beat it. Yeah, it's been a couple hours. It sat in a little bit. There'd be some parts where I thought I, I, I wasn't expecting, and then some parts I'm like, okay, that was awesome. Like, and then, like I actually got some major surprises, but I did overall, I did enjoy the game. Me too. I, want I was expecting something to happen, and I do not want to spoil it because it is technically a spoiler, even though yeah. uh, certain things happen at the end that denote certain things won't happen, assumably, mm-hmm. but... Uh, and we for sure talk about we'll we'll talk about everything in detail on the spoiler cast. Of of course, of course. But review wise, do you recommend people buy this? Uh, yes, actually, I do. Okay, so so we echo the last two weeks, I believe. Of if uh, you like JRPGs, you like yes. Final Fantasy Seven, of course, buy it. I will say, and we'll we'll end it at this. And Alex, you can expand on it a little if you'd like. I feel like this game is definitely meant to be played after playing Final Fantasy 7 original. Yeah. It does Whereas lead to where I originally you thought you could be fine. It does seem like you have to play the other game to really fully enjoy this. Yeah. Which I did not expect. I honestly did think we were getting some sort of retelling kind of, but that's definitely not what we're getting with this ending. Um, they make that clear so i'm i'm excited again we'll talk more about the spoiler cast so stay tuned might be live already please go check that out um and we also want to say welcome and thank you um our last video is probably if not the most watched close to the most watched thing in a certain time frame (laughs) of course uh so thank you to everyone that's new to the show welcome you are an achiever now it's uh uh, sorry, it happened so fast. You can't say no to it, so it just kind of happens. Um, you can't leave, so you're stuck with us. Moving on. <laughs> Alex, hmm. I woke up today. Okay. You already know, did, have did, me did in. The... <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> you, did the, you do the eye winkle. Like, ah, let me take a shower. Get ready for work. Yep. Take a shower. Get ready for work. Drive to work. Stop for gas. Mm-hmm. Get some gas and pumping. It's cheap now because... You oh know, god, so for sure. Thing. So cheap. It's like a, a for it's like a dollar eighty or something. It is insane. Whatever. Yeah, Anyways, it's crazy. Get a text from my girlfriend saying, "Uh oh, it's out." Alex, Assassin's Creed Valhalla was announced and a trailer was shown. Let me fucking boy. tell you. Oh boy. Let's. I'm gonna read this. The synopsis. Boy. Let's give. There you go. And then we're going to give our thoughts on the trailer, and then we'll go into the full write-up they have on Ubisoft.com. Assassin's Creed of Valhalla throws players axe first into 9th century England in an age of warring kingdoms and Viking conquest as Eivor? Eivor? 
Evir, <laughs> a fierce Viking raider, you'll lead your clan to build a new home amid England's fractured domains. Launching holiday 2020 on PS5, Xbox Series X, as well as PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Stadia. Assassin's Creed Valhalla will let you raid, conquer, and fight for glory in a serious, brutal new land. I think it's Eivor. Thank you. I think it's... Uh, okay, yeah. I, I can go for that. Eivor. It should be an A, but hey, I'm not going to be that guy. All right. So, trailer comes out, Alex. Mm-hmm. How did you... What did you think? How did it go? The first... My first reaction. The graphics have substantially, like, upgrade. Like, it, they went up so well. Like, mm-hmm. I was looking at it, and I'm like, oh, you know, usually Assassin's Creed has a certain, you know, graphics to it. Yeah. Like, for example, like, you know, Grand Theft Auto has its own graphics. Um, as an art style. Yeah, it has an art style that you can see. This mm-hmm. one has completely, like, went above and beyond, like, what I would have mm-hmm. thought. And I'm like, whoa, this is looks yeah, nice. The, the cinematic trailer does look nice, and, and I'm reminded of the... Uh, uh, Hellblade uh, two mm-hmm. trailer, which like blends blends like reality looking things to like the actual yeah what's going on. So it lo- it does look great, and I'm excited to see gameplay in a little bit. We'll go over that story in a quick second. Yep. Um, but we are getting gameplay in, in a little bit, so I'll be excited to see what the actual game looks oh, like. I can't um, wait. some of the the screenshots so far look great, but again, they're cherry pick screenshots. I'm excited to see how big the world is too. Mm-hmm. Um. But as off rip, it looks like we play uh, like the, like they said this Viking. Um, it, you get to pick a female and male, just like with uh, Odyssey. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks like uh, here. Let's do the read this extra in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Nearly every decision you make will have lasting effects throughout the world. Violence won't be your only tactic for getting what you want. A silver tongue can be as effective as a steel sword when it comes to finding a home for your people. Shifting England's balance of power and expanding your influence through diplomacy will likely make you more friends than brute force. Every political alliance you build, combat strategy you employ, and dialogue choice will make you, will alter your journey. That's sweet. That sounds like some sweet and ass gameplay, and I'm <laughs> f- I'm here for it. I'm here for it, Alex. Also, we could dual wield axes. Are you kidding me right oh. now? Oh. Are you kidding me with this dual wielding? One of, the of those axes. axes looks like the Leviathan axe too. It does. It you know. They definitely did the design yeah. to remind people of that, like for, oh, sure. for sure. Even though that is what they look like, it. it no, no, I'm for sure. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. But like, they, that, I mean, yeah. and of course, you Tug know, God of War was uh, Nordic. This is Nordic. I mean, it's just, it's so cool. Going over the, I'm just going over it in my head. Uh, it, uh, it looks like what Templars are branding the Vikings as like madmen and crazy. Mm godless people um and as we I, saw what from the I, trailer the hidden blades back the hidden blade is back who boy the hidden blade is back and it was i, I don't i was i don't know i i'm surprised i'm surprised yeah it's know, the top for lack one. of a better word yeah it's the one that's not not as refined and it looks so cool yeah like just ha- like it like balling your fist and it's just on top of your arm and yeah. you're just shoving it into that dude's <laughs> eye looks so cool what do you think this Odin business is. The, is it uh, uh, Odin? Remember during the oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. that trailer? Yeah, yeah. He looks over. There's a guy in a cloak, and then he disappears, and then an eagle flies over him. Yeah, yeah. And he says, "Odin is with us." Do you think that's like a a uh, what is it? A first civilization person from the game? Uh, yeah, I would assume so. Um, I have a, either he could be a descendant from Odin. Or, oh whoa! So you're going in with that? That'd be kind of cool. Maybe just because he, uh, he, he, I'm thinking maybe um, we we follow his story and then uh, he he sees he has some connection to Odin. He's trying to figure out his past. Maybe. Okay. It was it's strange just looking back and he just says Odin's with us and then they go and just murder everybody. Yeah. Um, but it is dope looking. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I'll read another excerpt. <laughs> you wouldn't be a Viking raider without raids in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. As you lead surprise long ship attacks to pillage enemy territories for much needed resources or launch massive assaults against rival Saxon strongholds. Raids will be more action packed and brutal than anything Assassin's Creed has seen before, thanks to the visceral new combat system that lets you bash, dismember, and decapitate <clears throat> your. Friends. Oh, wow. Uh, Eivor will be able to duel with axes 
and even shields against the greatest variety of oh. a- enemy types ever seen in Assassin's Creed. If you want to mix it up, the Return of the Hidden Blade allows uh, I've, Eivor, I think I've pronounced this differently every time I've said it's it, okay. to, assass- to assassinate targets with deadly precision. Um, so I'm excited to dual shields and just bash people in their skulls like Captain America. Yes, yes. Like, I'm so that's excited. Not, that sounds exciting. I, um... I feel like I will almost exclusively dual wield axes and run around just berserking everybody. Yeah, it's um um, I cannot wait. So it does seem like they're focusing on a cinematic raid. Do you think this is going to be more of like the the Athens versus uh, Sparta wars we were getting in um, Odyssey, or is this more of a like cinematic, look cool, cut people up type? I hope it's a little bit of both because I didn't really mind the whole Athens versus, you know, all that thing where, like, you know, you see a big war and you're running around and fighting people. Yeah. I didn't mind that, but I uh, I could have done without. So I I echo you said with a little coffee at the end. I like the ever because the main idea of it is that they're constantly battling. So mm-hmm. it is cool that a part will be Sparta then Athens, then maybe it goes to Sparta later on. You know, there's just constant wars that happen without you even doing anything. Yeah. Um, so the first couple are really fun, but then after a while, it does get boring because after a while, you're just like, all right, I come in, I kill specific people, and then I win the war, and they're pretty easy. So hopefully, like you said, it does kind of try and be a little more cinematic where it's at least cool what yeah. I'm doing rather than the kind of weird war thing I was doing, even though I looked dope as Cassandra just murdering folks with my spear. I do mm-hmm. kind of want to have more of a unique experience with the, with the rating. Yeah. Oh, with this, by the way, um, when you can pick female or male, you're still the same character, kind of like mass effect. You're just either. Which a male is cool. Version. Yeah. With that, like the last cool. one you had a, you know, a brother or the brother and sister, you can do either or this one. Yeah. You're the same exact person, just either. And, and to me, male. that that's a huge, that's a huge deal. Cause Cassandra yeah. and Alexios are completely different character yeah. bases to me. Um, because the way they sound and the way, Oh yeah, for sure. The mannerisms seem different to me. So I do like that. We're kind of getting a mix and match. I'm very curious if it will be similar to Mass Effect, where I feel like you pick the person you emulate more with. So mm-hmm. you, I would go male, whereas with Odyssey, I went with Cassandra because she, she seemed way more yeah. uh, emotive and her the voice acting was much better. So I'm curious yeah. if we'll get more of that or if it will be a more Mass Effect thing where both things are so good, you can just pick kind of whatever you want. I, uh, I don't so, know. Yeah. Playboy is female or male. Ivor leads a clan of Norse people across the icy North Sea to flee in Norway's endless war and dueling resources. If they hope to survive, they'll have to build a new home in the hostile lands of England. Though you provide yourself uh, for yourself and your people by constructing, customizing, upgrading your settlement with new buildings like barracks, blacksmith, and tattoo pilots, all while recruiting new members to grow your plan, uh, cool. clan. That sounds awesome. Yeah, that you sounds can, you like pretty much can create your own fucking town. That sounds so cool. I'm. I, that's the. That's. I think the biggest thing I walk away with mm-hmm. most excited about, where I'll be able to 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 recruit people. I'll have these tattoo parlors. I can make cool tattoos. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, you can and, change your tattoos and everything. Yeah. So you can kind of make your own your own Viking. Uh, Avor. Yeah. So that that sounds cool. I'm very excited for that. And then they um they did mention. I'm gonna be playing this game so much. I am so ready for oh, this game. Alex. The big thing about this game, it's on next gen and current gen. So let's start the conversation back up there. Okay. What What do you think that uh, means? And of course, this is all speculation. Mm. Are we getting this release day of the consoles after release day, before release days? Because of course, that will determine if I get this on it. I think we're getting this on release day, and I hope we do. I do too. I, I f- for them not stating a release date. I think it's a launch title. To, to me, echoes it's either a launch title or it's going to be very close. And I feel like they know to either not discuss that or yeah. at least they have some sort of deal to say, hey, don't say the date because people can kind of figure out when we're going to launch. Yeah. And it does seem like they have a branding deal with Xbox. 
Uh, the yep. trailer starts with Xbox and ends with Series X. Yep. Uh, and uh, as a quick transition, um, May 7th, mm. Xbox Series X will be shown. Gameplay. Um, gameplay on Inside Xbox Thursday, May 7th, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, of course. Uh, that is a one week wave. That is that's perfectly one week, basically. And they will be there to show off a gameplay trailer. So that is very exciting. I will be there to watch that. Oh, for sure. Um, so that is incredible. And then, of course, you have your additions, plenty of additions to go from, of course, from standard to ultimate if you want the uh, season passes to, mm-hmm. of course, the collectors. That looks amazing. It comes with a big old statue and everything you'd want with the game, soundtracks and all that. So you can, of course, go to the website to order anything you'd like there mm-hmm. um, or your retailer for whenever those become available. The last thoughts uh, on uh, Valhalla, Alex. I feel like it's gonna be my game of the year. Um, off the rip. run, run. It's gonna be a, a it's gonna be a, a literally a tie between this and Last of Us. So for me, I'm gonna have a difficult choice. I have Last of Us, Cyberpunk, and this, and I can't determine right now where where I'm at. And I would see, assume I'm ex- Cyberpunk. Yeah, and see, I'm excited for Cyberpunk, but that game has not ex- it, like it looks cool. Yes, but every time I watch it, it doesn't excite me yet. I mean, to be fair, they haven't showed the game much too, which yeah. is so like either it's, like it exciting sounds cool. or terrifying because <laughs> like, they haven't showed the game like, much. And see, and and it's weird, but maybe I'm biased with Assassin's Creed. If I, when I watch the Cyberpunk uh, trailer, I'm like, oh, that looks pretty cool. You know, I'm excited. For, um, I'm excited for this game. When I saw this, I'm like, I'm all in. Like I like if I had to choose, I'd rather have this. Yeah, well, that would be a hard choice if I had to choose one. If I had to choose, I'd pick Assassin's Creed. I probably would too because it's a known quantity. Yeah, I know what I'm getting rather than with Cyberpunk. It's kind of up in the air still what I'm getting, yeah. but I do think it will be good. I, I'm a little no, more no, positive. No, for sure. I think it's going to be good uh, too. It. I just, think it's uh, going to be. It hasn't excited me for yet for some reason. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm hoping they release some stuff for it because again, yeah. we've only really seen one gameplay trailer really. Mm. Um, that was an E3 behind the behind uh, the doors demo they released to the public like months after. I think almost a year after or something like that. Mm-hmm. Moving on. Project X Cloud will come to Xbox Game Pass. Users just playing twice as much as it's over on Windows Central by Jess Cord. Yesterday, Microsoft unveiled various figures in a huge earning call, citing massive growth across the board. We'll go over that in a second. Xbox Game Pass sits at over 10 million active subscribers as of writing, putting the value of the service into the tens of millions of dollars. Today, Microsoft Gaming lead Phil Spencer shares some additional facts and figures around Xbox Game Pass user behavior to showcase how the service isn't just driving cash flow, but also engagement for developers involved with the service. Quote, we are excited by the response to Xbox Game Pass, and yesterday we announced that Game Pass now has over 10 million members from 41 countries worldwide. Game Pass inspires a new era of gaming where the community with the same Game Pass plan can play a large common catalog of the best games discovering new titles and experiences together with game pass we want to answer the question what to play next with my friends we're still early on this journey in the last two months we've seen how important gaming can be to our community end quote that is an important quote in my uh, opinion alex Mm -hmm. mainly because that end point what the, the question they want answered what to play next with my friends so yep they of course want to get as many people into game pass as possible so yeah i think it's uh, you can read between the line that they want you talking about game pass and they want you bringing your friends in hey this is awesome i'm only paying 10 bucks yeah um i can play any game i want on this huge library come play with me and then you know they get their friends their friends etc etc that's why any 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 subscription service does a referral program where they'll give you five bucks or whatever yeah. for referring a friend uh, at Destiny 2, games are starting to do that. Destiny 2, I think Division does it now, too. Um, mm-hmm. But, hey, it's, uh, 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 good for them. Uh, let's move on. Uh, they want to emphasize that 70% um, of their Game Pass users are getting more friends, which is very interesting. You would think that, um, I don't know, most of the Game Pass games in my head are just kind of single-player games, but apparently it's enough games to them show a, a sizable growth in their actual friends. Uh, friend lists. Um, Spencer also indicated that Game Pass users are playing twice as much as non Xbox Game Pass users, citing them as a reason for the 130% increase in multiplayer gaming 
in the past quarter, which is crazy. After joining Game Pass, people play 40% more games, and more than 90% of the members have played a game they wouldn't have tried without Game Pass, often discovering new genres they have not yet discovered. This speaks to our passion at Xbox for sharing and celebrating games. Blah, blah, blah. And then they also confirmed this is the kind of the big bit right here. Additionally, Microsoft confirmed that Project X Cloud Xbox Gaming streaming is coming to Xbox Game Pass, allowing Xbox Game Pass users to stream the library to any device. We have asked Microsoft to clarify whether the Project X Cloud will be included grant, uh, granted as part of the regular subscription or will be an added tier like Ultimate. Hmm. Um, uh, yeah, I guess Jesus. I, I don't know how would that work. Uh, yeah, it will be interesting. They do add a tidbit, uh, an update to the story. Further to Microsoft's reiteration of xCloud, joining Game Pass, Microsoft noted that they'll have more to share on pricing options in the future. Hmm. So, so we can, it won't be part of it. It would be like an, an up, upper Apparently price, you I have guess. to pay for it. So I'm very curious. I wonder, I wonder how much it'll be. Maybe like 10 bucks more. Because huh. it's just a streaming service, so I mean, and you already have all the, all the stuff, and you're paying for. It, so I'm wondering, instead of like, for example, ten bucks, ten bucks a month, it would be twenty bucks a month. It makes sense, right? Just off the top of my head, ten yeah. bucks sounds decent, easy for people to wrap their head around. Oh, okay, it's just another ten bucks, and I get to play it on my iPad, or yeah, iPhone, for computer, sure. whatever. Um, and it works yeah, well. It, it does work. It does. It does work well. Surprisingly, on my iPhone, yeah. I play. I play Master Chief Collection. It works mm -hmm. well. Um, the only lag issues I feel like I'm getting is from my connection. Yeah, not yeah. necessarily the actual game, but of course. Yeah, no. Um, you, like you, you have to. You have to have pretty good connection to keep a smooth uh, latency. Yeah, for no hitching. Yeah. But it is pretty incredible to play. Yeah, it is. Halo on your phone. <laughs> like it's a pretty insane feeling. Yeah. Um it feels cool. You feel pretty cool. And it's it's almost weird. I don't know what I was expecting, but when I played it, it was like, "Oh, you've signed in um on Xbox." And I'm like, "Whoa, that's weird. Like I'm mm -hmm. on Xbox on my phone. Like it's just it's weird and cool." Same thing. No, yeah, for sure. Um and we're going to go over some quick stats Xbox uh, uh, like they said, we need a financial call uh, stating the game revenue is down 1% year over year. Xbox content and services revenue is up 2%. Microsoft knows that the slight rise in uh, game content is a, is for people sheltering in place due to COVID-19, but it's partially offset a high prior year comparable primarily from a third-party title. Atlanta is using the last several prior quarterly reports. Um, that is a... Uh, Fortnite, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if you don't know what that means, they are saying we're not as high because <laughs> Fortnite was the thing last year and that made a lot of money. Yeah. Um, uh, furthermore, our personal competing business segment, which includes Xbox and gaming as well, Windows OEM and Surface search advertising revenue reaches 11 billion, up 3% year over year. And then uh, with this is within the company's projection of between 10.75 and 11, 15 billion. Yeah, wild numbers, and it gets even crazier. We'll stop there, but that's just a little insight in how much money they're dealing with. And then, of course, you did see the rise from people not going outside, so they play games and go on their Xbox more. Yep. Uh, on the back of COVID talk, let's go over to Game Industry Shop Biz. James Batcher talks with Phil Spencer. Xbox Phil Spencer Dickus is not exploiting a global pandemic. Head of Xbox Phil Spencer has spoken out about the delicate situation games companies find themselves in during ongoing coronavirus crisis. In an interview with Business Insider, the executive acknowledged that Xbox, like so many game firm, uh, firms, has been seeing benefits from the majority of people spending more time at home, but is being careful not to take advantage of the situation. Quote, we wanted to be very thoughtful and not explaining the situation. He said, we're not putting in place any different business tactics or any other things. We're just trying to keep all the services up, trying to keep the games enjoyable, keep our network safe and secure, and being there at a the time of need. I'm proud that we can provide this activity for people. I thought that was just an important thing to bring up that yeah, there, companies have to float the we need to be there, but also we can't exploit the situation with being weird, being like, hey, pay more here, pay this there. So that's kind of cool that they're making sure not to exploit anybody and as far as I know, I haven't seen any issues in my Xbox service, so that's cool. Um, of course, they've seen more people play, so it's really cool for as many people that are staying home, probably on Xbox, it hasn't really messed with my service. No, yeah, for sure. Everything's good. Okay, Alex, that sums up Xbox talk. All right, I'm very excited for that Series X gameplay. 
Um, that's basically everything I have down uh, for any Xbox talk. Any lasting sentiments for the audience? Um, get an Xbox. Yeah, <laughs> they're actually on sale right now. One X's are three hundred bucks. They're that's clearly nuts. trying to clear out One X's. So nuts. if you want a One X, three hundred bucks. Of course, you can wait for the Series X. That will be between, of course, five hundred to five fifty to six hundred, depending on what we're getting. And of course, there'll be the cheaper one, probably around four hundred, with Project Lockhart. Yep. And then we're getting, uh, we're moving away from Xbox into the PS Five territory. Uh, I want to give everyone an update. Last of Us Part Two comes out June nineteenth. Ghost of Tsushima, July seventeenth. Mm. These were all updated on PlayStation blog. Um, I won't read the uh, actual blog post here. It basically just goes over those two things. I thought, Alex, I don't know what you think about this. I thought it was very interesting that Last of Us is being put before Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. So essentially, Last of Us just pushed Ghost of Tsushima a month and just took its spot. And Pretty much. All... I'm surprised really Ghost of Tsushima is so close, though. I thought it would be they're more really of a holiday close. game. You would well. I, I'm. I'm. This worries me to a point. So it's weird. Most giant companies like this don't put two things like this so close. These are only a month apart. Mostly, you at least yeah. have two months to three months. Um, you as you try to go as far as being, um, which are about three months time, four mm. months time. So it is strange that we're getting two massive games. With like I said, within a month of each other, um, and it is very curious that, like I said, Last of Us Part Two just they just moved to Ghost of Tsushima back a month and put Last of Us there. Yeah, it's 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 nuts. I hope that I get to. F- I mean, I get to. F- I'll finish Last of Us in a month. I just uh, some people, you know, like to take their time. So hopefully they don't they don't feel rushed to have to say if they want to play both. Thank you for reminding me indirectly, Alex. Okay. PSA to everyone listening. We're gonna uh, we're, we're putting our serious sweaters on for a second, okay, guys? Mm-hmm. Serious sweaters on. Okay. PSA, a assumingly disgruntled Naughty Dog employee, could Uh-oh. just be a playtester, could just be anyone, has leaked the plot, Uh-oh. major story beats and gameplay, I believe. So be wary out there, ladies and gentlemen. Of spoilers, if you care. If you don't care, hey, you can go read the whole entire plot. Smiles I haven't right seen now. anything. I'm glad. I, I have not that. seen anything. I was on Twitter as soon as I heard it. I muted everything that had to do with The Last of Us. Yeah. <laughs> Joel, Ellie, abbreviations, just Last of Us at all. Yeah. It's all muted. So, again, if you're out there, be careful. If you care, if you don't, hey. Moving on. So, this is just a random tweet from Insiders. Uh, and you know what? That makes news for us, okay? So don't judge us. Mm-hmm. Jason Schreier tweets out, what about the PS5 event in concludes mm-hmm. to the Xbox Series X gameplay announcement? Um, and Jason Schreier says, a few more weeks, I believe. <laughs> and then uh, Nibel, uh which is another kind of insider guy, retweeted that. So oh. in a few weeks, we'll get uh, some sort of PS5 thing. And, and, uh, and, and if I had to assume a few more weeks is in May. So yep. we're right, Alex, as always. <laughs> oh god um since we're getting this gameplay alex do you think may 7th are we thinking end of may or or beginning of june for the event for the ps5 yes i feel like it's gonna be the week after oh that is exciting i feel like that they're, gonna, they're gonna show this gameplay and they're gonna be yeah. like damn that looked good we need to send our shit out so we're gonna do it the week after <laughs> So gonna, it is incredible. I feel it's like it's going to be though, between right? the 14th and the 18th. I have a feeling. This is this is pretty incredible though, right? Like we have we are getting we have seen the system as well as the controller, as well as the ports on the system. Mm-hmm. And we're about to see games being played on it. Yep. And we have seen mm-hmm. the controller of the PS5. Yep. <laughs> we have not seen games on it. We have not well, eh, you can eh, I'll, I'll, you can you you can kind of say we've seen games played on it. We saw Spider Man, uh, tech, I think technically played on it because they did that. Just yeah, the the that how fast, fast it thing looks. they did. I don't think that really counts. No, that doesn't we, count. We, yeah, that you're right. It doesn't count. But we've not we've almost seen nothing. Um, so I'm I'm very 
Alex, hmm. between you and me, no one else is listening. Okay. okay. Just shh, between shh, you shh, and me. Okay. So don't, don't tell anybody. Okay. A- am I the only one worried a little? But, but PS5? You know, I'm, I'm getting a little scared. I, I am too. But I'm Everyone sure left. I'm sure, I'm sure they'll be fine. Sean Layden disappeared but, one day. Yep. Still John don't know what Drake happened to him. left. Yep. Geo Corsi left. Yep. <laughs> uh, what's his name? Um, Shuhei Yoshida didn't leave, but like definitely is isn't on the he... back seat. Yeah. He's isn't he doing indies? Indie... Yeah, he's helping with indie titles, which is much different from being head of first party. <laughs> so Yeah, that is nuts. So it's just so much different stuff is happening. And I'm not worried as if PS5 would be bad. I'm just worried that we're getting shakeups and I'm just cautious on what's going on. To be a final wall, man, what happened? What happened to Sean Layden? We still don't we know. Still it is May don't know. 1st. That was like that was like four months ago, I think, or something like that. He maybe he, I guess he, maybe he just wanted an out. Too much, uh, too much stress or something. He just, he just wanted an out and he said, "Just everybody leave me alone." Maybe, hey, maybe, maybe he didn't want it to be a big deal. But God, is it weird to get a tweet, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I think Gio Corsi got a blog post uh, with when he left. I think so. I mean, it's just strange when your head of everything leaves and it's just not talked about. Uh, all right, we've hit Xbox, we've hit PlayStation. There's only one left: Nintendo. This is over Nintendo. on Venture Beat by Jeff Grubb. No Nintendo Direct planned for June due to work from home hurdles. Um, this is a great article just by Venture Beat. I'm going to read most of it, but please go over and give them a click because this is just a great article. And it gives us a really good context on um, Japan's work from home orders and their uh, ability to work um, in certain uh, ways. Uh, so, <clears throat> sorry, I'm Nintendo is selling partner developers. It is not going to hold one of Nintendo Direct video events in June. Um, the publisher has had a June Direct to score upon with E3 every year since 2013. And before that, it held annual stage presentations, but complications brought about from Japan's work from home order as part of its attempts to mitigate COVID-19 or forcing Nintendo to push back its schedule. Nintendo was putting together a June event. The company was lining up partners and planning to unveil its first party schedule for the rest of 2020, that including highlighting the Mario's franchise's 35th anniversary, which is going to celebrate with the release of some classic 3D Mario games on Switch. Alex is getting excited. Mm. But, but now the company is far less certain. If it holds another Direct, it may not come until the very end of summer. <sighs> the June Nintendo Direct may be the victim of Japan's culture clash with work from home. Nintendo is not unique in its struggles to adapt to work from home model. That's especially true in Japan, where a number of companies were not prepared for this kind of shift. And even weeks after Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo, uh, Shinzo Abe, ugh, I butchered that, <laughs> enacted a state of emergency, corporations in the country are still trying to catch up. It turns out that you can't remote Japanese business culture in a handful of weeks. The issue is what, while many people outside of Japan view as a country on this cutting edge of technology, this is. To me, the most interesting part of the article, because I did not know this, this isn't the case uh, with all aspects of its business culture. In a story of the Washington Post reporter Simon Denner explains that many IT departments and corporate strategists haven't changed in Japan since the 1990s. Companies still regularly use fax machines to send documents, and they have little awareness of cloud computing or video conferencing tools. But that tech version extends beyond the workplace into people's homes, as Yuri uh, K- uh, Kagayama. Kagayama, Kagiyama, thank you, writes for the AP. Many J- Japanese lack the basic tools they need to work from home. This includes personal computers, but often people don't even have Wi-Fi. The hmm. slow embrace of the cloud and other tools, however, is likely less about the fear of technology. Japan places supreme importance on conducting business with face-to-face meetings. Decision makers through the Japanese economy believe that they cannot show proper respect without appearing in person. So that's just a fascinating look in Japan's that's culture, crazy. honestly. And I wanted to share that with you guys. That is crazy, though. I did not know that. Yeah, I don't um, They don't even have PCs, and they and most places don't have Wi-Fi, which is pretty crazy in 2020. And like they said, and, uh, and maybe it was too uh, quick of me to say that, uh, think that, but I... I thought Japan was cutting edge. 
but they had robots and stuff. I'm, su- so I'm sure there's certain wrong. parts of Japan that do, but I'm sure most oh, of, of it course. is still is not. Yeah, I don't want it to get mixed. This this isn't a third world country. <laughs> like they have the access, it's just yeah. most places don't. I did I did hear that internet cafes are a big deal. So I mean that makes more sense for me. Cat cafes. Uh, cat cafes, of course, of course, cat cafes. Um, you could just pet a cat. Meow. Why don't we have? Well, we should have those things. What, I, I want to pet a cat. Let's like. Yeah. I want to drink some coffee. Pet a cat. I guess now, so. achievers out there that have been listening, don't you have cats and coffee at home? I do. Okay, but I just want to go to strangers and, and pet cats. Okay. Yep. <laughs> don't judge. Right. Don't judge. Alex, that's the news for oh, the week. No. This is pretty good. Pretty good news we got. I'm excited when it comes to things. Sasuke Valhalla won't escape my mind oh. for quite a while. Um, especially since we're getting another look on the seventh, which is which and as of recording is the first. Is the first. So it is very exciting for me. I cannot wait for this. Again, I'm excited for the rating. I have a quick um write up on my Twitter if you want to head over there, but I'm excited for the ratings, the dual loading axes. They said they're reworking gear. Um so it's gonna be a, a little different, different. gear. Yes, combat is different. Apparently, um, uh, the the yeah, the well, it escapes my mind. But the gear rework is is very uh, interesting, and I'm curious yeah. on how the actual story will unfold too, because they've been doing really well with kind of tying them all together. So I'm very yeah, curious yeah, on sure. how this how we leave from yeah Athens from origins and... to to uh from origins to uh oh God Odyssey. Oh, it was Odyssey. a really good tur- it was a really good uh turn. Yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't too crazy of a jump, but now we're we're in ninth century England, so this is a big yeah. old big old leap. So I'm very, I'm, hey, I'm excited. I'm ready. I'm ready to 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 mess up some Anglo Saxons. Mm-hmm. Alex, I have one question before we end this week's podcast. What is that? What are you going to play? I literally have it paused right now. Oh, I'm going to play Modern Warfare 2 Remastered. Finally out on Xbox five Finally. years later. Woo! I'm going to go play this thing on Veteran. Five years later. It really was a month, but it's, again, very silly for, like, a 20-year-old game to <laughs> oh, yeah, release. For sure. To have, like, a hold on a different system. But, hey, mm-hmm. we got it now. Ladies and gentlemen, we got it now. So we can only complain so much. Alex, you going to 1,000 this? Oh, I'm going to try my best. I we did the original one. Them. I yeah. did two. I did one, two, and three. Yep. 1,000, I'm pretty sure. Yep, and I have I have thousand the new remaster for Call of Duty Four Modern Warfare. I did too. So I gotta do this. My one God. Uh, Miles High Club. Club. Oh my, my God. God! It took. Yeah, it's crazy because it, I took it took me long, but not as long as with the original. <laughs> or I vice versa. I feel I like think it, I did, I think I did it quicker this time. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure, honestly. Oh my god! But it, we were there for it, hours. All, I eight hours. Legitimately, yeah. it's very cause, hard. Because after a while, you get it down, and, but you still die. You already know when to restart, and you just keep running. Oh no! Nope, restart. Oh no! Nope, restart. Like you just hit the I, button so fast. For whatever reason, it is ingrained in my mind. PS5 trophies did a video on it. Mm. explaining how to do it and you know he shows you what we already know there's that one room you have to only flash and just run yep there's the one room where you just shoot these two guys and then you have to run yep. then you flash the next room shoot and one don't forget dude, the last two run. guys at the very end because if you shoot one yep. the other one comes around the corner and destroys you and yep. once you're done once you open the door you got to make sure you don't miss yep and if you miss you're done good luck you're doing it all over again yep um but what I was uh, about to say is I remember him ending the video with like, so that's that's the route. And I'm not going to lie, guys, some luck plays into this <laughs> because <laughs> because you have to get the lucky like the AI doesn't shoot you at this point. It will shoot you at this point. But you're already gone. You know, there's like a bunch of like just if you're lucky, it won't happen. But if you're not, you're just going to have to do it again. Yep. All right. But I'm, I'm probably going to yeah. play, play this. Some Persona Five Royal. I I'm still I'm still leaning against the Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I'm not sure yet. It's, yeah, see, oh I feel like this won't take me long, so I can do this and then go to Persona or back and forth because this, you know, there's so much Call of Duty you can take. So I can play a little bit and then stop and then go Persona and then back and forth. Since I have this are system you, in the same room, are you so. interested in getting the platinum in in Final Fantasy VII remake? Mm, I don't think I will. I I I think it will be something I piece out. Yeah, like just piece because I have fifty percent right now. 
You do have to re-beat the game, though. Yeah, that's my thing. I'm beat like, it in a heart. Mm, I don't so, want to do that right now. Yeah, I'm not in a rush. And I'm, I'm not going to lie. I <laughs> I don't care who says it. Don't oh? care. But I was on normal. Uh-huh. On the very last part. I, or, like, not the last part, but one of the... One, on the on the last chapter, I had to bring it down to easy. Just, no, yeah, you did? Ju- yeah, just because I was getting so screwed on a certain part, I was what like, what happened? I just oh wait, uh, well, yeah, man, no, sorry, that's no, a dumb question. No, to let's, ask. Okay, if there's, <laughs> we'll save that for the pick. Look, we'll save that I'll give you a hint. Funny. I'll give you a hint. So just so you know what I'm talking about, and just so people can look forward to this, there'll be a part where there's uh, an enemy. It, there's technically three enemies and then they combine into one and oh, then that, that gotcha. one destroyed me every oh, single time i see I'll be, before, I'm, I'm excited to talk to you about this because yeah i okay i know what you mean oh my god <laughs> so i was I, I i was getting so mad and i was like you know what <laughs> easy i beat that in one hit i was or like in one shot i'm like yeah, why shot. is it such a big difference between easy <laughs> and normal i'm like oh my jesus it was only that part that i need to help with that's that's hey that's surprising. I'm curious on if it was your your level or something. Uh, I was I'm level thirty something. I was forty. Uh yeah, I was like mid thirties. There's something okay. So you're not too far. Yeah. So I don't think that's that big a big difference. Ugh. I was upset. <laughs> Everything else was fine. I did yeah, the whole, yeah, I did like, the rest like of the like game on normal. It was just game. that one section. I had to put it easy, and I was like at the last chapter. I'm like, I hate you so much right now. And boy, am I enjoying Persona Five Royal, man! Ugh, the difference, I miss the it. difference so far is so good. I um, miss it, and you're so far ahead of me. I'm sure. Uh, I've done the third palace, mm. so I'm a, I'm a whole palace ahead of you. Yes, you're a whole palace ahead of me because I haven't even done so, the third palace. Not not that not that long though. That that it's not a huge segment. You yeah. can get through that in about a day and a half. Oh, I'm sh- I'll, I'll catch up. Don't worry. Yeah, you you've definitely got. Oh whoa, that was like a that was like a threat. <laughs> Look, um, because you know I have the the set, uh, the other TV in the other room. Yeah, I wanted to be in the living room while my wife watches TV, so I brought the whole TV and the PlayStation into the living room. So I have the TV next to the French doors, so I can sit on the couch and still play the game. Oh, you're doing some um. So that's I have some couple Twitter stuff. That's yep. Andrew Renee and John Drake energy right there, bro. Yep. They got two TVs just chilling next to each other, and they play like something or yeah. while the See, other so like, TV or whatever. Yep. So while Carly's watching TV or doing something, I'm playing the game over here. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I, mean, I can picture Carly's just like, why? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> she's not a fan. Why is that? <laughs> You're just doing it anyways. She understands <laughs> with the whole situation that's going on. She she understands. Yeah, understand. So she's cool yeah. with it right now. But she was like, yeah, ah, whatever. That was an important caveat at the end there. She's she's okay with it right now <laughs> yeah who knows eventually it's weeks. gonna have to go back but i told her who it's knows gonna stay two, like this for a while weeks. <laughs> hey, it's, maybe, it's, hey, it's been it's been like three four days already hey hey we'll get, uh, keep keep us updated alex how yeah. long will the tv stay how long yeah, right <laughs> it's funny because oh. i started moving it and i was like don't freak out so i was like i'm gonna move some stuff and she's like what <laughs> so i started moving some stuff out and she had she stayed in here to make sure i didn't damage anything i'm like i'll be fine <laughs> tv's in half in the next morning oh god like, no, oh, that, that something t- happened the tv is my like it's, it's it's like my pride and joy it's your it's your baby mm. it's like my tv it's like it, it's it's beautiful yeah it's my first 4k tv samson 50 inch 4k tv is i love it lg 55 for yeah. me i love this thing on that note yep <laughs> achievers thank you so much for listening to this week's easy achievers gaming podcast as you know if you like us you can head over to patreon.com so that's easy achievers make sure alex doesn't have to eat stuffing every week because that's gross and he will definitely die of some sort of <laughs> malnutrition or dysentery like death yeah uh so give us the buck there uh of course that unlocks every single exclusive we've ever done monthly yep uh, so you will get instant access to even more content. Write whatever comment, and I will read it. <laughs> I forgot about that. So yeah, if you go to patreon.com, where you can you ha- you have to give us the, the 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 buck, and then you can comment, and then we'll read it on the show. Look, I even um, forgot to say silly things. I even forgot why, but look, if we hit 
a couple more patrons, I'll still wear that Chun Li outfit. Oh God, that's old. That hey, there's an I I know there's an achiever that remembers the yeah. Chun Li outfit yeah. out there, and he's like he's and he's waiting for that stimulus check to hit, and he's gonna be like I'm gonna I'm gonna take care of that. Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna get that Chun Li outfit. Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna shave my legs for it uh, and everything. There you go. There you go. I don't know. I might uh, leave them. Hey, that will add to the factor, man. Yes, man. <laughs> Again, thank you so much. Stay safe. Go achieve. Go achieve.